In this video, I'm going to be using a very simple recipe to make an orange mead. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, a friend of mine stopped by an apiculturalist, that's beekeeper, you and me, and brought me back several pounds of orange blossom honey. I'm going to be using some of this honey to make this orange mead. Now, I'm going to be using uh, mandarin oranges. You can use any type of oranges you like. This is just what they happen to have at the store. And I'm not going to be using any yeast nutrients or yeast energizers, which if you are making meads or have made meads in the past, and that's how you prefer to make your meads, go for it. Not mad at you. Uh, beyond that, let's get on with it. Now then, to make our orange mead or orange melomel, we're going to be using the following. We're going to be using three pounds of oranges. In this case, I'm using mandarin oranges. You can use whatever you like. I'm going to be using three pounds of orange blossom honey. I'm going to be using Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast, which I know is going to make the melomel go very dry, so I'll be doing back sweetening later on. If you prefer to use a yeast energizer, feel free. If you prefer to use a yeast nutrient, again, feel free. I try and shy away from everything other than as natural as possible in my wines and meads. We're going to be using enough water to give us one gallon or to break, raise our level up to one gallon. Something to do primary fermentation in. It doesn't have to be a wide mouth container like this one. You can use a standard cardboard jug, demijohn, or take your pick. Something to do secondary fermentation in. Airlock with stopper. A hydrometer to help us determine how much alcohol we start with or potential alcohol we start with and what our final alcohol levels are going to be at the end. And before anything, we're going to be using star sands to sanitize all of our equipment. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this orange melomel. Now, if we're going to make orange mead, of course, we're going to need orange juice. Now, if you're using uh, already squeezed orange juice, that's perfectly fine. If you're doing it more old school, then you've got to do it by hand. Go ahead and slice up your orange of choice. Go ahead and give that bad boy a squeeze. Okay, that's one half. Okay, out of that, I was able to get just over two cups, or for you non-imperial folk, that's about 500 milliliters. If I were using clover honey, I would probably use more oranges, but I think that should be enough for this particular batch. Okay, I've taken the opportunity to warm up our honey just a little bit and also to warm up our water it's, uh, somewhere between 100 to 110 degrees and that's primarily for two reasons. One, to help dissolve the honey in the water a bit more easily and also to get the temperature that's going to be comfortable enough for the yeast. So let's begin this process by pouring in our honey. And I'm going to try and do this with a trick that was recommended. Simply inserting a toothpick at the base to create a little air gap so that the honey will flow a lot more easily through the funnel. Let's see how this works. If I can make it work without spilling everything all over the table. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see. All right, so far, I'm impressed. It seems to be working. I mean, it's not perfect, but it seems to be working. All right. I am going to rinse this measuring cup out later to make sure I get every 
last good drop of that honey. And let's go ahead and add some of our water so we can, no, let's go ahead and add our orange juice. All right, so far so good. I'm going to add a little bit of our water. Just about halfway, because I'm going to have to shake this up. And what am I missing? I'm missing the cap to the jug. So let me grab that real quick. And we're just going to go ahead and begin the process of shaking this up to mix everything up. All right, that seems okay. All right, so what I want to do now is go ahead and fill up the balance of our container with some of the rest of our water. Leave that back again. <laughs> See, this is why. This is why you needed the uh, the toothpick. Go ahead and try another one here. Totally slipped my mind. All right, let's try that again. Much better. All right, because we're dealing with a primary, I'm going to leave a fair amount of headspace, at least during primary. In secondary, I'll go ahead and close that gap. But I want to give the yeast a little bit more oxygen to work with. Let's give this another quick shake. And now let's pour off a little bit so that we give our yeast a chance to bloom before we add that. Now normally I would use about a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast, certainly when I'm making wines. I usually use a half a teaspoon when I'm making meads because in my wines I don't use yeast nutrients and I don't use yeast energizers. So by using a stronger variant of wine yeast and a little bit more of it, so far I've been able to overcome any issues with fermentation. So as long as it works and I can keep it as adding, without having to add as any additional additives, then that's what I'm going to continue to do. So we're just going to give that a few minutes. I'm going to grab my hydrometer and take a hydrometer reading before we add the yeast. All right. Got my trusty hydrometer here and also my turkey baster, which both, all of which has been sanitized. Let's go ahead and take a quick reading. I should point out that this is still lukewarm. Well, just a shade above lukewarm. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool down just a little bit so I can get a more accurate reading. Okay, it looks like the reading is coming in at 1.110. Now with that having been done, I think what I want to do before I put in the yeast is I want to give this one more good shake. All 
And let's get our funnel in there. And let's go ahead and incorporate our yeast. All right, all that needs to be done at this point is to put in our airlock. Okay, airlock has already been sanitized and bubbles are at the appropriate levels, or rather the liquid is at the appropriate levels. So far looking good. What we need to do is that we need to put some labels on this jug, jar, demijohn, carboy, so we know what it is we've made and when we made it and what the original hydrometer reading was. So let me grab some tape. Now that we've got our orange mead slash melamel -mel completed, a couple of things. One, this is a very basic recipe. You could have added spices, you could have added more fruit, actual whole pieces of fruit. You could have done it any way you want. This is just, again, a starter. Now for the next three days, I probably will give it an additional shake. After that, I'll probably bring this level up quite a bit to eliminate a lot of this headspace uh, for, the, for the next uh, several weeks, probably next three to four weeks, after which I will probably rack it into secondary once there's been enough accumulated sediment down at the bottom. I'll go ahead and rack it. And then roughly every six to eight weeks after that, I'll rack it again until the mead has become clear. At which point in time, uh, I will probably back sweeten it and bottle it. And after a year from today's date, when the mead is actually ready to be drunk, I'll go ahead and crack open a bottle and enjoy. There we go orange mead. Okay, it's now been 20 months later since the start of this video. When I first started making this batch of orange mead, had not planned on letting it go to 20 months. I thought I had done a 12 month tasting as a standalone video, but as I was perusing through my video list, uh, shortly after cracking one open and taking a few sips, uh, I found out that no, I had not done a taste testing on this particular mead, which was kind of unfortunate. Uh, because after having tasted it now already, I can say that this was pretty doggone good. A couple of particulars. One, orange mead, born uh, January 2021. AVB came in at 13.91% uh, and it's been pasteurized. And this was one of my early pasteurization efforts because all of the honey solids have separated uh, down to the bottom of the bottle. Uh, these days I do meads, uh, I'll pasteurize those in the carboy so that all of the solids can settle down there and just simply rack above that into the bottle, leaving you with a clear bottle. Speaking of which, this wine went very clear. Uh, no haze, no nothing. This was a very, I'm sorry, wine? No, mead. <laughs> this mead has, uh, has uh, went very, very clear. Uh, although I've already had my own initial results, I will do this one for you. Has a very smooth finish. Um, it's not too alcohol forward. It's not too honey forward. It's more orange forward than anything else. Um, this particular bottle of wine was one that I had uh, stored in a box in a closet somewhere. And I decided to go ahead and just pull one out there just to you know, enjoy a bottle of something that I had made. Not, re not realizing that I hadn't done the taste testing video on, on it at all. And uh, while I was, again, in the process of, it, of enjoying this particular mead, uh, it turns out that, uh, yeah, this was, this was one of those ones that you can make and you, you're glad that you made it. It turned out quite well. No changes to the original recipe. Uh, no, one change to the original recipe, since it's something that I now do that I had not been doing at that time, was that uh, when I learned how to make a homemade yeast nutrient, uh, that's something that I would add to both wines and meats that I've made uh, since then. 
And that's probably the only thing that I would change in this in this particular bead is that I would use a yeast nutrient. I mean, it turned out quite well without. Uh, the yeast nutrient probably would just simply help it along a little bit more. Uh, again, this was very nice. Mm. Yep, very nice. This is one of the ones that I'm glad that I made. Uh, so again, I'll try and keep uh, my tastings very short. And I will just simply say that if you want to try an orange mead, uh, give, give the recipe that I used a shot. Uh, it turned out quite well. Most meads that I've made have turned out fairly well. Uh, will I make this one again? Most definitely. Uh, I've already got uh, one variant in the works. Or rather, in the uh, planning stages. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm very happy with this one. Uh, orange, orange mead. It's a winner. So if you like what you see here, again, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. Better yet, become a subscriber. Better yet, become a member. Better yet, click on that favorites button and show some love. And as always, the Patreon account if you just, just, just want to donate to help the channel uh, produce more and more of these on an ongoing basis. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.